Jackson Brown singing Dr. My Eyes. This is Democracy Now! I'm Amy Goodman. As we end with a look at the Indian Ocean Archipelago of the Maldives, the long, lowest-lying nation on Earth, which could be submerged by rising sea levels, the government of the Maldives found an innovative way of bringing the world's attention to the dire consequences of global warming. They held a cabinet meeting underwater. President Mohammad Nasheed and 11 of his government ministers wore scuba gear, plunged nearly 20 feet into the Indian Ocean for a special cabinet session calling for concerted global action on climate change ahead of the Copenhagen Conference. Well, the president of the Maldives was in New York last month, and he spoke at a major event at the Society for Ethical Culture on the eve of the U.N. General Assembly opening session. President Nasheed was in conversation with the former president of Ireland, the former U.N. High Commissioner for Human Rights, Mary Robinson. If world temperatures rise over 1.5 degrees, we won't be around. Yeah. Um, that would mean not just the Maldives, it, um, a number of other low-lying countries. We are talking about hundreds of millions of people. Um, uh, you know, we haven't done anything hmm. to, uh, to be in this predicament. And we would like to uh, see and try to impress upon other people that they uh, actually consider what is happening to us and we've been saying this, um, if it was important for countries to defend Poland in the 1930s because it was a frontline state, it's very important to take, take care of the Maldives now because the Maldives and many other small states are in the front line of what is happening uh, to the world, to climate today. If you can't defend the Maldives today, you won't be able to defend yourself tomorrow. And also, um, interestingly enough, um, small island nations just now adopted a resolution um, very much in line of what has just been said here. Uh, we are not just simply talking about capping emissions. We are really actually talking about uh, a huge change in the manner in which we produce things. We are not talking about stopping production. We are not talking about stopping con uh, consumption. We are talking about uh, another industrial revolution uh, where renewable technology and greener technology uh, remains at the heart of the new transformation, the, the transition of our economies to more uh, greener methods of producing um, and consuming things. Uh, so basically, uh, we don't think uh, that uh, this issue necessarily is a negative issue. I mean, I do understand that um, Kyoto Protocol at times sounds like a list of uh, things that you shouldn't do. But you can also have a list of things that you can do. You can be producing renewable energy. You can be making things more efficient. So in our mind, uh, we're not really asking for an unreasonable offer or unreasonable demands. Uh, we're just simply saying we want to live, um, and, and please understand that. I must say I was very taken by a step that the Maldives took as you have tried to get your message across. You went to the Human Rights Council, and as a result of that, we have much more understanding of the link between climate change and human rights, the whole range of basic human rights. And, and in a way, you know, given that you have to wake up every morning and think of this burden of you know, the prospect for your people and the need to change the world, um, are we listening? I mean, have you found that people in New York are listening? Um, do you feel that the... Uh, Alliance of Small Island States is going to get a hearing. Do you think you're going to get the decisions you want in Copenhagen? Ma'am, I personally am an optimist. Um, we've been achieved a lot of things against odds. Uh, the Maldives had a dictatorship for the last 30 years. And we've just recently adopted a new constitution. We've had our first multi-party mm -hmm. elections. We are a 100% Muslim country. Uh, who has been able to galvanize the public for political activism. And we've been able to transfer power fairly smoothly 
and peacefully. Um, odds are against us many times. But we feel that, uh, you know, people can't be that stupid. Um, uh, so, uh, uh, you know, uh, we can't, I, I really don't think that we are suicidal. Mm. Uh, and, and I think uh, we have an obligation on ourselves mm. to make the message very clear and let the good people of the United States understand what we are talking about. And I believe that uh, people are listening. Mm. Um, of course, coming in here, it's very obvious that everyone is listening. <laughs> um, uh, my impression of the United States, uh, I will take it from here. Good. Uh, so I would have a, <laughs> I would have a better... <laughs> But as you said, uh, there is much to uh, look very positively about the changes that have taken place in the Maldives, and you have been a great leader in relation to that, the democratic change and the role that you're now playing. But uh, we were listening to a very clear uh, discussion earlier about the need for the policies to reflect the way forward, and indeed the way forward to, to green jobs. What are the policy priorities you want to see leading up to Copenhagen? Um, efficient energy use policies, regulations, legislation on how we use energy, on how we use electricity, water, and so on and so forth. And more investments in renewable energy. Um, start thinking um, in another frame where we understand that not all goods are free. Uh, you know, we've been living, in a sense, with this economic idea that some goods are free. Uh, but now we have come to understand that really nothing is mm. free, and we have to take care of this planet. Mm. Uh, so, uh, basically, uh, more investments in renewable energy, uh, and, and more uh, uh, energy-efficient uh, usage and regulations to that effect, but also, very importantly, more trying to understand more on what is happening. Um, I, I'm, I'm not sure uh, if all of us understand exactly, for instance, what is happening to the Maldives, mm. how the currents are changing, how sand migrations is becoming, migration is becoming a problem. Um, so, you know, I think uh, we need to learn a lot more, mm. um, understand a lot more, and also in the past, um, uh, we've been in the habit of uh, spending a lot of money on very heavy engineering.